So in this video series, we're setting up a Maya scene as a template for foreground shot builds. And in part one, we organized groups in the outliner for our stand-ins and caches and created sets with overrides for our stand-in groups. And in part two here, we're going to set up the various render layers that we're going to need. So we're going to open up the render setup editor here and create a layer. We're going to call this Shad AO because we're going to put the shadow and ambient occlusion into this layer. And I'm going to create, uh, to start off with, a couple collections. And what I'm going to do is, in this collection, I'm going to create a sub-collection for each of these. And in the sub-collection, we're going to define that as being the shape nodes. So I'm going to come into here, into the sub-collection, and just write shapes, and do the same thing for this one over here. And then I come into here, and the filter here, I'm going to set two shapes, and then type in the wildcard asterisk, which means everything. So basically what it's saying is, whatever I put into this main collection, this includes all of the shapes within that. All right, so now I need to populate the main collection. And actually, I see I've made a mistake here. This should be foreground stuff, not background stuff. So let me change that. And then I'm going to select it and then come to the foreground asset group and click Add to add it in. And now I come to the shadow group. And for that, I want to take the blocker stand-in group and add that. That blocker group is going to catch the shadows of our characters and props. So we need to create a material override for it. And then on that material override, we're going to put in a AI shadow mat material, which is made exactly for that purpose. So I'll just type in shadow in here and select the material override and middle mouse drag it into there. Next up for the foreground stuff, we want it to be casting shadows, but we don't want it to be visible. So we're going to make an override on the primary visibility for that. So I just need to kind of pick any of the shapes and come into the section of the attribute editor and right click on it. Here I got primary visibility. Let me right click. And it's actually not here. So what have I done wrong? Ah, I need to select the visibility of the layer. And then when I come over here and right click, you can see now it says create absolute override for visible layer. So what I need to do is in there, I need to select the shape node. So I need to have it vis the layer visible and the sub collection shape node selected. And then I create the override and then it comes underneath there. I can come into here, I can unselect it here, but look at this, when I click on the other shape node, all the shape nodes in this group are included here. So we'll do a test render and see what we have so far. We won't see anything in the RGB, switch to the alpha, and the alpha is also black. And that is because we have an AI mat on the blocker set. So we need to make a layer override to turn that off for the shadows layer. So select the set, come into the AI mat. It's important again that the shape collection is selected. Right click, make the override, come into here and turn it off. You'll recall in the previous video that we turned self shadows and cast shadows off. And the reason we did that on the set overrides is because this is the result. However, if we turn them on, you can see really faintly that we're still getting something happening on this uh, blocker object. So we're going to come into here and you'll see that we have by default include all lights in each render layer by default. So all of the lights are there and affecting it. And the light that's affecting these branches is this sky dome light. 
We could, of course, turn that default off, and then we'd have to include all of the lights explicitly, but we're going to do the opposite. We're going to just set a absolute override for the intensity in this render layer, and then come to our override and set it to zero so that the light does not affect this, and the only light that's affecting it is the sunlight, which is the light that should be casting the shadows. And we're going to actually use the RGB channel here to put the occlusion in. So I'm going to make a AI ambient occlusion. I'm going to come into the RGB channel, and over here on the shadow matte shader, I'm going to slide the shadow opacity to zero. So I just get flat white on everything. I still have here the shadows in the alpha. And I'm going to take the ambient inclusion and drag it into the background color, which is giving me one thing I want, one thing I don't. I'm getting the occlusion from my foreground objects, which I do want, but I'm also getting it on all of the objects, and I don't want that. And if you come in here, we see that we have self only, but we want the opposite of that. We want exclude self from ambient occlusion. And so we're going to use trace sets to do that. So if I come into just the shape of something, you can see that we do have a trace set in like all geometry shapes all have a little trace set section here where you can put in, you can tag something for a trace set. It's a little more complex with stand-ins. So one option you have is to define the trace sets in the geometry, then save it out as a .ass file, and then read that in with the stand-in, and it'll come in with those trace sets defined for that geometry already but let me show you the complex way to do it. On a stand-in, we need to come here and expand this hierarchy, find the shape node and select it, come in here under Add Assignment, come to the drop-down, choose Poly Mesh, and then at the bottom here, choose Trace Sets. And then I need to put in the name here. I'm going to call this No AO or well, maybe I'll call it no set AO. It doesn't really matter what you call it as long as it's meaningful to you. I'm going to come into the branch and do the same thing. You can see I already made one here, so I'm just going to give it the same name that I did before. And next, I come into my ambient occlusion shader and then put that same trace set there. And then I need to also select not inclusive, making it exclusive. And when a trace set is exclusive, rays are traced against all geometry except the tagged nodes. So that gives us no self occlusion. So we render this and it's not working. So I'm going to refresh this here. It's red. That means it needs to be refreshed. I'm going to close and open the render view and give it another go. And with that refresh, we see that it's working as desired. So there's one last thing we need to do with the occlusion, which is that everything outside the geometry is black. And so we need to make it white. So I have this sphere here that I've scaled up to 1,500, so it's really big outside of our scene. And I've come into the visibility and I've turned off everything in here. And that will actually work nicely for Z depth because it kind of gives it like an end to the world instead of it being infinite. So that could be useful for other purposes. So I've called it Z sphere here in the main layer. But what we want to do is do a little bit of a modification to it in our render layers. So I'm going to come up into here and create a new collection. I'm going to call it Sphere. I'm going to add the sphere. And as kind of common best practice, I'm going to make a sub collection for shapes and set the filter and do the wildcard star or asterisk. 
and then I want to actually turn primary visibility on. So I'm going to select my layer, select the shape, right click, create absolute override, and then go into it and turn primary visibility on. Then the final thing we need to do is assign a surface shader to this sphere. What we're going to do is set the output color to white and the out matte opacity to black. So in our shadow layer, we don't get a white sky. And in our occlusion RGB layer, we do. So that's everything for the shadow and ambient occlusion layer. I'm going to make a couple more layers and we're going to have one for the main render and one for cryptomats. In both of these I'm going to put in a collection for foreground assets and as before add in the foreground group and create a sub collection underneath each of these for the shape nodes. And then let's set up the curved mat layer. What I'm going to do is come into my AOVs. I'm going to create a layer override for cryptomat material and cryptomat object and enable them for both. And then I'm going to come into here into the samples and also make an absolute override for all of the secondary sampling. And what I'm going to be doing in the cryptomet layer is just turning all this stuff off. So setting it to zero makes it off because we don't need any of these calculations for the cryptomet render and it will speed things up. I'm also going to create an override for ignore lights. And turn that on. That will again make the render for the cryptomets way faster. The last layer we want to set up is the main layer. Now we've already done most of the setup for this in the first video. What we are basically going to do is take what we have in the master layer and put that into its own render layer which we will call main. This has two benefits. One is that it allow us to set the master and main render layers differently which makes things easier for lighters working on shots. The main render will give us the output that we need for comping the foreground elements into the background, and the master will give artists the perspective to see what's going on in their lighting stage. Essentially what we're going to do in the master layer is apply the same textures that we have in our Unreal scene to the ground and the branch, the, the blocker objects and what I can do then is I can much more accurately make sure that I'm matching the same lighting, that I have the same light values for my sun and sky that I do in my Unreal scene so that I know that I can then start the lighting of just the uh, foreground characters and it's going to be kind of like a, a, an equal starting place for the two. So you can see I've done that also here on this uh, branch, in both Unreal and in Maya, making sure that they're matching. The second benefit to this approach is that it makes things easier to manage, explicitly turning on the AOVs in this main render layer rather than needing to turn them off on all the other render layers. So let's take a look at doing that. I'm going to turn off all of these AOVs, not with overrides, but they're just off so they're off everywhere. And then I'm going to specifically create overrides in the main layer where I'm going to turn them on. And then I'm going to turn off the rendering for the, the master layer. 
So it's only going to render out the main, the crypto, and the shad AO layers. Now, there's one thing I forgot to do, which is I put the foreground elements into my main layer, but of course I need the BG stand-ins in that layer, since I'm using that instead of the, the master layer. So I made a collection for those guys, and I'm going to do the same thing on the cryptomat layer. Finally, let me show you how all of these layers are put together with the background render in the comp. Here, I've got the, the beauty layer, and then of course I've got in here all the different AOVs on that particular layer. This is the main render layer. And by the way, you can see that it's called here main in the name. And that's because in Maya, we have it set up to have the shot name you have to put in manually, and then we have scene slash scene underscore render layer. So it names it what the scene name is, puts it in a the folder, then the file itself has the scene name and then the render layer name on it. So that's the main render layer. And then I also have over here this shad AO render layer. The shad AO, because he's got these little stick feet, isn't doing a whole lot. But if I switch over and look at the alpha, you can see I'm getting alpha masks on things here. Then that is put in together with an in here. So we have the from Unreal, we've got our switch back to RGB. We've got here our uh, indirect skylight and then did a little grade on that and then we put this in the shadows. The ambient light goes into the shadows and then that is put over the background. So we have shadow and then the character shadow added over that and then we put the character and then we place it over the whole thing and you can see I've added also a bouquet for the, the background based on the depth information in the scene. 